Now in this section, we'll see the last last type of NAT uh, that is port address translation, where uh, we are going to translate all my private networks, like whatever the network I'm using, 192.168.1. Network, maybe maybe it is having 254 addresses or more than that. If you have, I want to translate all these private IPs should go to internet with only one registered public IP, and that IP will be 5111. So to translate all my private IPs should get translated with only one registered public IP address. So that is what we call it as PAT, but using different port numbers. So I don't know exactly what port numbers they'll be using. So I want all the devices to get translated with only one registered public IP. So we also call it as dynamic NAT overload. So let's see how to do that. Now to make this possible, if you see the syntax, the syntax of uh, the path is exact similar to it's exact same we can say okay as we did in the dynamic NAT where we had to write an ACL which is going to define what is your private network same no change we need to write ACL and then we are writing 192.168.1. network which is going to tell that any address starting with 192.168.1 these are my private addresses and then in the second statement we are going to write the public pool where I'm going to say IP NAT inside pool the name of the pool is CCNA and we are writing the starting public IP 5111 and then the ending public IP also we need to write same so if you're writing same it means that we are we are uh, defining to the router that I want to use only one registered public IP address and the subnet mask you can use either slash 32 because it is just a uh, one single IP so for one single IP, you can match with a subnet mask of slash 32 or, or you can write slash 28, 29, whatever it is. So normally when we are defining one single device, one device, we, we generally use, or one single IP address, we generally use the subnet mask of slash 32. Slash 32 is going to represent only one device or one IP address. So that's the reason we are using slash 32, that is, 255, 255, 255, 255 represents slash 32. But it's not mandatory that you should use slash 32. It's up to you. But generally, when we represent a single device, we use slash 32 subnet mask or one, one single IP, we can say. And then finally, we are going to translate that whatever the private addresses are defined in the ACL 55, and the translator should go with a pool name called CCNA. And then we have to add one major keyword here called overload. So when I say overload keyword, it will do PAT. If I don't add this overload keyword, it will work as a dynamic NAT. And the only difference between the dynamic NAT syntax and this syntax is this, this word. So I'm saying that overload means um, it's, it's like, you know, take some extra load on the same public IP and translate all the private IP addresses with only one registered public IP addresses. So if you see the syntax, it's exactly the same uh, what we did in the dynamic NAT. And then implementation part, it's same. Interface facing towards the router is always inside and the interface connecting to the ISP is your outside interface. So it's the same thing, you know, there's no difference in, in the different kinds of NATs here. So for verification, I did not implement the dynamic NAT in the previous lab. So I'm going to continue here. I'm going to define an access list 55, which is going to permit 192.168.1. Network. And then I'm going to say IP NAT inside source. Uh, sorry, IP NAT inside and then source. Sorry. So we need to say IP NAT pool and the name of the pool is CCNA and then what is the starting public IP I decided 5111 and if you want to use the same public IP we have to define the last public IP also 5111 and then we need to say net mask and then the submit mask we can use either slash 28 slash 29 or just use slash 32 if you're using one single IP address. So it, it matches only that particular IP. It will not match any other IPs. That's that's uh, that's what slash uh, 32 represents. And then we need to say IP NAT inside source list. And I need to tell the list name is 55. 
and then we need to define the pool and the name of the pool ccna and then we need to say overload and then interface uh, f0 by 0 is inside interface interface s0 by 0 is my outside interface so for verification we can use show ip nat translations you can see i don't have any translation table because i have to generate some traffic so let's generate some traffic here from 1.1 I'll generate some traffic from 1.2 and from 1.3 computer also and from 1.4 computer also I'm generating some traffic done so once I generate the traffic now if I use show IP NAT translations you can see the traffic is generated so let's come one by one so I'll first verify these four lines now these four lines are, are go coming with 192.168.1.1 and they all go with the same IP address and I'm generating some ICMP traffic which is my ping messages this is the first traffic they all go with the same IP 5111 and the second thing if you observe here the next one this is also ping the four messages here they all go with the same IP again 5111 even though it is 1.4 they all go with the same IP 5111 and if you observe the last two lines the last two lines here, one is 192.168.1.2 and 192.168.1.3, they both go with the same IP again this time, but they use different port numbers here. So probably the port number reservation starts from 102.45 like this, it will go on, and it uses the random port numbers. Uh, uh, it's something that done by automatically, we are not going to do anything on the port numbers. So it's going to use some unreserved port numbers and map the same public IP but it is mapped with different port numbers for each and every connection and these are the destination servers which I am trying to access okay so after some time if you observe the output it will be removed because you know after some time once uh, the traffic becomes inactive it will automatically remove the entries from from the NAT table and this NAT trace translation table is temporary and this is going to confirm that your translation is happening on the routers so I got one more scenario here, PAT, using exit interface. Now, uh, the one scenario which I used in, uh, the one scenario which I used in the previous example here, where I have translated all my private IP addresses, 1.1 network, they all are going to internet with one registered public IP 5111. So we are going to map with, with 5111. But in this example here, we are using the same private network, 192.168.1.1 network, and they all will be going to internet with the public IP, whatever we have on the S0 by 0 interface. So more commonly, you, have, you may have a public IP given by the service border, and I want to translate all the users with the public IP of 100.111, which is on S0 by 0 interface, which means all the users, they are getting translated with the public IP on the WAN interface, whatever is given by the provider. So instead of using the same interface, instead of using the, uh, instead of using a separate public IP. Now this is another common implementation you may find in the production networks. Now in this scenario, we just need to write an ACL which is going to match your private network. So which is defining your private network, just like we did in the previous statement. And there is no need to define any pool there is no pool required to define the range of the public IPs. So there is no need of writing any pool. Instead, we need to write IP NAT inside source. And the source, uh, I missed one command here. Source, we need to say list, uh, list 55. And then it should get translated with whatever the public IP, which is present on, on the S0 by 0 interface and overload it. So which means I'm saying that whatever the private IP which I defined in the ACL 55 should get translated with whatever the public IP we have on the F on the 0 by 0 interface and then overload it. So which means now all the users in the LAN will be getting translated with the public IP of 100.111 instead of using 50.111. Now this is one common implementation you may, you may come across in the production networks where all the LAN users will be getting translated to the public IP 
and mostly this public IP will be automatically assigned by DHCP by, by the service portal and that might change uh, it doesn't make difference if, because whatever the IP present here it will be using that public IP to go outside the LAN okay so this is how it's going to work now this is how we are going to use PAT in case of uh, broadband connections as uh, as you know in case of broadband connections it will be a little bit different where you have all the customers let's say you have some some customers in my colony let's say I got some some one of my home and they all connect to the centralized centralized switch and then they all will be connecting to some router so this is a centralized switch which is a service port or exchange office uh, the box which is in your in your location and then probably similar way you have some <coughs> uh, multiple uh, customers in different different areas they all might be connecting to the same centralized router and then this particular router this is on the service port side mostly this is on the service port exchange office and then it is going to connect to again back to outside network so outside network means mostly connecting to other service portals or which is which is carrying the traffic from outside outside to another ISPs uh, and connecting to internet we can say which is again connecting to internet here now in this scenario you will be using all these interfaces the blue interfaces whatever you can see this all these blue interfaces will be your inside interfaces because from there you will be getting some uh, private IPs and the interface which is connecting to the outside network will be your outside interface so this will be outside interface. this is something done by the service port anyway but this is a typical uh, service port implementation where you'll find and, and probably we are not going to do anything on the home broadband internet connections because we, our job is just to take the ISP connection and the translation done by by the service portal in general but in, if you're working in a production network in a company network we generally prefer to do the translation on our own on our own routers by using our own designated a dedicated public IP address will be using for translation so wherever you're working either in a service portal environment or and here you got a private range so we, we got an ACL which is going to match thousands of private IP address range and they get translated with only one registered public IP address. So that's how it's going to work uh, in, in, in general in the other scenarios here. Okay, so this is something what we have seen. We got three different types of NATs implementations here. Uh, majorly in, in the production environment, you will see most, most common as a PAT implementation because, because using PAT, what we can do is we can translate thousands of private IPs can get translated with a single public IP address.